A very good day to you. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. It's Thursday, May 2nd. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run. 43-year-old Sharon Tony Finch, the founder of YIT Foundation that gained national attention last year when she claimed that veterans in her care were evicted from a town of Newburgh Hotel to make way for migrants arriving in the Hudson Valley, was arrested by the FBI yesterday. The U.S. Attorney's Office, along with the FBI, announced that unsealing of an indictment charging Tony Finch with defrauding military charities and the Veterans Administration and with fraudulently claiming to have received a Purple Heart. She's expected to be arraigned in White Plains Federal Court. Tony Finch, a resident of Newburgh, who also uses a Sullivan County address, is charged with wire fraud, which carries a maximum potential sentence of 20 years in prison, theft of government funds, which carries a maximum potential sentence of 10 years in prison, stolen valor, which carries a maximum potential sentence of one year in prison, and altering military discharge paperwork, which carries a maximum potential sentence of one year in prison. Police in Poughkeepsie are looking for a man who was wearing a gray hoodie with the hood up and a COVID mask when he is believed to have shot two teenagers near Poughkeepsie High School Tuesday afternoon. An independent forensic audit of the Village of Monticello's books for the period January 1st, 2019 to January 5th, 2023 has found a number of issues, including that the village had not had an unqualified audit opinion in the last six years since July 31st, 2018. This review was conducted by PKF O'Connor Davies Accountants. Recently elected Mayor Rochelle Massey, who previously was a village trustee, is particularly concerned with the audit's findings that there were no bank reconciliations prepared for the period reviewed. Bank re- reconciliation never did it, and how do you balance your books? If, if, how, do, if you, how do you know where your money is if you don't balance your books? You have to balance your books. There were statements that weren't even, bank statements that weren't even open. The past treasurer didn't open. The audit also found that there was a discrepancy of almost $467,000 in the general ledger postings that should be investigated. Police in Poughkeepsie are looking for a man who was wearing a gray hoodie with the hood up and a COVID mask when he's believed to have shot two teenagers near Poughkeepsie High School Tuesday afternoon. A 17-year-old Poughkeepsie youth sustained a gunshot wound to his neck. He was rushed to the hospital by ambulance and was expected to recover, police said Wednesday. A second young man, who's 19, was also shot and got to another area hospital by personal vehicle. He, too, suffered from a gunshot wound to the neck and was expected to recover. Police found several shell casings at the scene. The investigation is continuing. More news right after this. Find over 100 retailers allowing you to spend hours shopping safely at the Galleria at Crystal Run. Enjoy the big brands and the diverse selection of family-owned stores all in one location. The Galleria at Crystal Run offers dining options for everyone with Fuji 110 Grill, Allen's Mediterranean Grill, and Peru Cuisine. Discover the Mid-Hudson Valley's premier shopping, dining, and entertainment destination, the Galleria at Crystal Run. For more information, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or visit GalleriaCrystalRun.com. The New York State Liquor Authority has permanently revoked the liquor license for a New Paltz establishment that has committed numerous infractions, including serving alcohol to underage patrons. P&Gs on Main Street in the college town had their license suspended in March after state investigators and the Ulster County Sheriff's Office raided the establishment on March 15th. The business in operation since 1969 had its license canceled by the SLA at a full board meeting on April 25th. Officials in the town of Forestburg are pushing back against accusations made by the Office of the Attorney General that the town passed a zoning law that discriminates against Jewish property owners. In a statement issued by Dan Hogue, the town supervisor, he says that 
the attorney general's office seriously mischaracterized the issue and misled a wide variety of media outlets and others. According to a letter issued last month by the attorney general, the town's local law three requires houses of worship in residential districts to have 200 acres side and rear yards much greater than that of secular buildings with the same capacity. Hogue says the attorney general is incorrect because the law contains no such requirement. A New Windsor resident, 62-year-old Tyrone Hodge, was sentenced in Orange County Court yesterday to six years in prison and five years of post-release supervision following his guilty plea to felony drug possession. As part of the sentence, Hogue agrees to forfeit $67,000 in a Honda Pilot that were used in the drug sales or proceeds of a crime. It's alleged that on August 30th of last year, state police executed a search warrant at a residence in New Windsor and recovered 815 grams of cocaine and over 143 grams of crack cocaine, as well as scales and materials used in packaging narcotics. A 33-year-old New York City man is expected to be sentenced to 10 years in state prison and five years of post-release supervision when sentenced in Orange County Court in June in connection with his guilty plea to selling narcotics in the city of Middletown. Tyrell Hicks and his brother Mitchell allegedly sold cocaine to undercover investigators during the fall of 2023. When Hicks was arrested in December of last year, he had a quantity of narcotics on him. Hicks had admitted that working with his brother, they sold a half ounce or more of cocaine in November. Mitchell Hicks previously pled guilty to drug sales and is awaiting sentencing. I'm Hank Gross, MidHudsonNews.com. The news today brought to you by the Galleria at Crystal Run.